All right, uh, this is our uh, second Chalk Talks this season, um, and we are very blessed to have uh, Rachel Garcia joining us, one of the most decorated softball players of all time. And, uh, you know, it was just um, by chance, you know, reaching out to Rachel, and it just happened to work with her very busy schedule, and uh, really appreciate her time being here today. Uh, our Chalk Talks, for those that are on, um, that are not aware or haven't been involved with it in the past. Uh, the point of the Chalk Talks is to invite guests, uh, former players, you know, current players, coaches, et cetera, successful business women, and bring them on to the program and just kind of go through an interview process, talk to them about, um, you know, their accomplishments, uh, ask questions about how they got there, listen to their uh, journey, their softball journey and you know learn from the best so it's always good to talk to somebody that's achieved and gone to the next level and uh, again we're very fortunate to have rachel here today rachel garcia joining us and a former ucla player uh, team usa and um, athletes unlimited player and team i think i mentioned team usa but also uh, UC uh, San Diego, correct? You're coaching there now? Not anymore. I actually, I currently coach the youth. So just doing lessons, doing camps and all that right now. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, well, we'll get started here. Um, first off, you know, just maybe just a slight introduction. Uh, Rachel, I mean, I can go to Wikipedia and there is a long list of accomplishments that you've had. Um, you know, all the way from your freshman year in college, which is documented as freshman of the year, um, two-time national player of the year, 2018, 2021, uh, NFCA national pitcher of the year, two-time USA softball collegiate uh, player of the year, 2018, 2019. And obviously you won the uh, women's college uh, world series in 2019 and was selected the most outstanding player of the year. Um, and the list goes on and on, which is you know, spectacular. Um, you've also been a um, gold medalist uh, for Team USA. And I, were you on the team last year as well, Team USA? Uh, the Pan American Games? I was, I was currently just at the Pan American Games, which I got back like two weeks ago. Um, so yeah, one gold there and just waiting for the next uh, playing opportunity to pop up. Yeah. And then you were also crowned um, Athletes Unlimited. Uh, what was it? It was a, it was a player of the year or was it for the last segment of the season? Uh, for AUX. So if you don't follow Athletes Unlimited, it's a point system. So you're ranked individually based on how you play. So I won uh, athletes and like AUX season, uh, which is just a three week season and it's a little shortened, but it's kind of like the start going into the championship season for athletes unlimited. Um, so one AUX and then in athletes unlimited champ season, I placed fourth. Um, but I was hoping to be on some more winning teams there, but it definitely helps when you get put on winning teams to win, to win it all. Yeah. And we've had uh, Alyssa Denham on our, on our Chalk Talks before and involved with the program. Sierra Romero um, not only is involved with our Chalk Talk, but she also comes into does clinics here in Michigan mm -hmm. um, at our facility. And uh, we've had Morgan Zirkle and, you know, and Megan, um, oh gosh, uh, Ballant last year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's it's great to see and and hear about you know softball and growing in popularity and uh, the athletes and limited season doing well. Um, you want to kind of is there anything else um, introduction wise that you want to kind of touch on like accomplishments that you've had? I know you've gotten involved a little bit with coaching, correct? Yes, um, I started my college coaching career at San Diego State University. Um, I was a volunteer there in 2022 season. Um, we were able to get all the way up to regionals, which was a first time for many for them. So it was awesome to be a part of that. Um, 
historical part for them. And then last season, uh, 2023 season, I was over at UCSD and I was the pitching coach there. And now I just, um, I want to be able to grow the sport and start tapping into the younger generation to help grow the sport. And I know, Mm -hmm. um, it starts, it starts hit there with the younger ones. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. Um, yeah, I agree with you. It's uh, got a great young group coming up, and uh, a lot of girls interested in playing softball. And hoping to see more girls get involved with sports um, after the whole COVID epidemic. Um, and I think things are are heading in that direction, and it's good to see. Um, so how about your humble beginnings? Uh, what age did you kind of start playing softball and how did you get involved with softball and who, you know, maybe the person that helped inspire you to play? Yeah, um, I grew up on the field, so I was always watching my older cousins play. I was watching my parents play slow pitch, so I was just always at a field. Um, so my how I got into it was because of my cousins. They played fa- uh, fast pitch. And I always liked going out to their games and I liked watching them play. So I actually picked their numbers because of them, which was double zero and 21. Um, And one of them was a pitcher and one of them was a catcher and the other one was a first baseman. So obviously I had to pick two of the three positions to play. And I got, I just got started probably when I was about five or six. And then I didn't get serious until I was probably nine or 10. That's when I went into travel ball. Yeah. Great. And yeah, having the whole, uh, you know, influence by family. And um, I know that you're, you were involved with athletics quite a bit as a a high school athlete. Um, What would you say to kids playing multi-sports? You think that's an important thing? in this day and age? I would say 100%. I feel like it gets you a lot more athletic. It gets you just out there and active. I mean, you don't have to love the sport, but if you're going to try it, why not? I mean, I tried, my very first sport I tried was cheerleading and I hated it, but my parents were like, you wanted to try it. We're going to stick it out till the season's over and then you can decide if you're going to be done or not. So, I mean, I played, I, I did cheer, I played soccer, I did basketball, did um, did some volleyball. And I mean, I even through college, I was still playing co-ed volleyball with my mom just because it was fun and it just got me active. So I'd say go out there and try the different sports because, I mean, it's going to, it's just going to get you a lot more athletic and moving left to right a lot better. Yeah, I agree a hundred percent. And our uh, travel club, we really promote our, our players to play multiple sports. And I know depending on the size of the club that you go to, some of them uh, really want you to dedicate yourself just to one sport. But I strongly believe that, you know, at the age, you know, any anywhere from eight to 18, you should try to get involved in many things as possible and, and try things out and you never know. Um, so, and I think it's a, it's definitely great from an athleticism standpoint you know, listening to college coaches talk about, you know, I, I had a girl walk onto my team and she had a great vertical leap and we thought we could teach her how to play in the outfield or, you know, this other kid was really fast and, you know, we helped develop her. And so they're, they're looking for athletes. Mm-hmm. So um, how about your high school team? What was high school ball like for you? Um, High school wasn't, as competitive, obviously, where the air, the area I was in, um, it wasn't as competitive as obviously Division One. But um, for me, it it was the best time of my life because it like I got to be able to take a break from traveling. I got to play local. Um, I got to be around some hometown friends. Got to play in front of my hometown, obviously, and then also to take my high school all the way to the CF championship. Um, for one of the first times. So uh, by far, probably high school season was one of my favorites just because I I got to take a step back, even though I wasn't um, traveling, I wasn't doing the showcases, I wasn't doing tournaments, I just was able to 
have fun and play the sport locally and do what I love in front of family. So just being able to play local and, and right in front of my hometown was, was by far the, the best. That's awesome. So we would say that uh, travel ball was probably the, that's where you were at the competitive side and at showcases and, and doing things like that. And, and I know that that dynamic happens. It's different for every girl, like either their high school team is loaded with travel ball players or, you know, I was really competitive in a great travel team, but my high school wasn't very good. And we encourage our girls, you know, play with your high school, have that experience, um, you know, regardless, you know, whether it just helps you cope with and being humble with either winning or how, how do you handle loss? You know, it's all of those life lessons uh, that are involved. But yeah, it's different for every player. So it's interesting to ask everybody, you know, what, what that experience was like. Yeah, um, you only get to live it once. So just enjoy it so how about your uh, travel experience what was that it was like? awesome I mean I I played with Corona Angels uh I played for a couple coaches there but I so my transition into travel ball I was the team I was the teams I was with it was kind of like half travel half rec um and I didn't really want to get fully committed until I just took a whole season off. So I actually in transition going from, from part-time travel and rec to full-time travel, I took a whole season off um, from travel ball and I just played rec league, just wanted to enjoy being a kid before I got serious. And I wouldn't change my transition at all or how I got into travel ball because I feel like it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been a fun transition from being not so serious going being serious into softball so um but my my break I I same thing just kind of played local um wanted to just enjoy my childhood before I got serious but then when I got into travel ball I played for current angels and um I will say it was probably really tough but I would say mentally it definitely prepared me for college um and it's not about the tone that you're hearing from the coaches, but it's about the message. So I think that was the biggest part about going through the system. And that it would guess that was how it uh, prepared you in a positive way for mm -hmm. that next level of play. Yes. Yeah. Um, how about the, you know, from the personal side, I mean, how much travel did you do in travel ball? Did you travel nationally? Um, not Nash. Well, I, the furthest I went in travel ball was New York. Um, and that was for, I can't remember what tournament it was, but New York was by, was probably the furthest, but we always did the Colorado, um, tournament yeah. and mostly just stayed in California, most of it. But, um, for me, I was traveling about three hours to get to practices, to games, because I, I lived, I live in um, California in Palmdale, Lancaster area. So my travel was a bit further than, than others. So I was that one that had to get up at three, four in the morning to get to practices on time or even to games on times, but constantly over the weekends, long travel trips. It's a lot of big dedication to you know, following through and a lot of hard work, it sounds like, um, which it obviously paid off. So congratulations with it. Um, so going from high school to travel and, you know, you're obviously looking forward to, you know, you're looking towards college and probably wanting to play in college. Um, how did you select, like, say, camps and clinics? Did you go to the schools that you were most interesting, interested in or did somebody reach out to you that saw you at a showcase and invited you to UCLA? How did you kind of end up at UCLA and what was that experience like? Yeah, so there was a Corona Angels alum that went to UCLA and her family saw me. So that's kind of how I got connected with UCLA. Um, but the other schools I went to, to look at, I, I went to their camps Um I told my travel ball coaches that those were the schools I was interested in. So we like, he helped me get in contact with them. 
um, made sure he, he would tell my coach would tell me that I needed to go to these camps on these dates, um, to be seen and to be able to talk to the coaches. So I had help there, but getting involved with UCLA, that one was actually one of the last schools I was able to get in communication with, but I knew for me, I wanted to stay in the pac 12 and to have that opportunity for UCLA to offer me was, was my dream come true. Cause it was my very first um, collegiate softball game that I've seen in person. And I knew that I loved the stadium from the first moment I stepped foot into onto campus. That's awesome. So it felt like home when you were there. Yes, it did. Yeah. What what would you say to younger players that are, you know, a lot of our girls, you know, we, we have every everything from 8U on up to 23U. So we do have current college ball players playing. Um, what do you think some of the important aspects of, like, when you went to a camp, what made a player stand out to a coach? I would say, for one, don't be afraid of failure. Um, softball is not easy. You're you're being asked to hit a round ball with a round stick. So obviously that's not very easy. Um, but I think it's how you bounce back from those failures, like asking coach to hit you another one, or it's all right, like owning, owning the mistake and being able to move on to the next pitch, the next at bat, like how quick can you bounce back from the, those failures and how quick can you adjust from that? If that makes sense. Like, like I just swung and missed at a rise ball. Okay. I'm probably going to get another rise ball even higher. Like how quick can you make those adjustments? And, and also how good of a teammate you are, how you're treating your teammates and, and your peers around you is another big one. And body language as well. Like kind of how you're reacting, like you're saying, bouncing back and mm -hmm. how people are reading you. Um, and we try to, you know, we try to inform our girls as they're getting older, they're going to more exposure opportunities and it's like people are watching you they're watching you when you're in the dugout they're watching you when you're walking between fields how you're interacting how you're treating people like your parents mm -hmm. um all those things are very important um how about so we talked about your little, little bit on the recruiting side and and you ended up at ucla and you know that maybe that wasn't the the first school but it ended up being your top choice and you know because you did go there um, for a game and it just ended up fitting and feeling like home uh, which is really cool um, how about the transition when you when you got to UCLA and you got to play in your first game what were some of the things that you thought you know like transition wise from high school to college that was expected or unexpected like did it was it easy for you to make that transition or did you see that hey there's a lot of top players here now and now I'm not the only one and so what what was that uh you know what was your perception of that transition I would say softball wise it it was a fairly easy transition for me um I like to compete and I knew I knew that going into college I had competition that I had to beat to get that starting position so I wasn't afraid of that transition I would say if anything it was a schooling part that actually was a lot harder for me to transition into. And I would say that not any school can truly prepare you for the amount of classwork that you get going from high school to, to college. So that, that transition was by far the hardest for me. So the, the time management kind of side of it with your workload. Yes. yes. The workload, the time management, yeah. being able to balance out softball and school um, prioritizing things that need to be prioritized. It was, it was like a slap in the face almost. So it, it is, you know, and I, I try to tell our girls, um, it is a full-time job, you know, playing softball because I mean, weightlifting and practices how many times a day and, you know, and you're constantly on the go. Um, you don't have a lot of, uh, available time in your schedule while you're in school. Um, so it's it's cool. The time management part is something that a lot of the girls talk about and the workload, because I, I know UCLA, you know, it's a good school and I'm sure the expectations are high as well. There. I just told your mom she might want to. Sorry about that. Mute that. Um, so we're looking at uh, playing in college. What was your experience like while you were at UCLA for the four years? 
it, well, I was on the 10 year program, but yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. I would say just the, the support you get from your alumni is the best. I mean, I don't know, I can't speak upon other schools, but I just know the support system that I have with, with Bruin alum goes deep. And I mean, they've, that's how I got started with my coaching career. So just the, the support you get with, with the Bruins is cool. Um, but then also the friendships that you do create that goes for anywhere you go, just your true friends are going to be, are, are who you meet in college. Definitely. I would say, um, I mean, we, we all st- still keep in contact. I actually just went to one of my teammates weddings not too long ago. So, um, just the, the friendships that you make in college are going to be special. And then you you got an opportunity to to play in the College World Series. How many how many opportunities did you get in the playoffs to get to uh, the College World Series? Was it your junior year and your senior year, or how did that I work? Was, I was able to go to the World Series all five years I was there playing. Well, not playing, but uh, my my freshman year I was a red shirt. I didn't play because I had a knee injury, but we still made it that year. So that was my first year, and just being able to experience it not playing was probably kind of like a good thing because that stage is the biggest stage in softball so being able to be there soaking it all in it's amazing to see how far softball has come from where it started till now and it continues to grow and I'm hoping that the pro leagues get like that soon but just to see softball continue to grow in the way that it has been in the last 10 years has been amazing who did you play in the uh, championship game when you won the World Series? Was that Oklahoma? It was definitely Oklahoma. Yeah, seems like they're always there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what What do you think? Uh, like for you, um, what's one of the most standout like memories that you have from playing in the College World Series? Um, the most standout, I would say it's not win. Well, obviously, winning is going to be everyone's best moment of college, but. I would probably say it was the game going into the championship series. Um, We were in a zero zero ball game with Washington and I don't, I think it was the bottom of the 10th and I hit a home run, home run to walk it off. That was probably one of my more more memorable moments at the world series, especially because that year I had a, I had a very rough season losing my grandpa that, that year. And it just kind of like felt like it was all put together and it felt like we were just meant to win, win, um, the, the, the championship that year. So it just like how special that moment felt was, was definitely the most memorable moment. Very cool. And then, so after you graduated from, what did you graduate? What was your degree at at UCLA? My degree was in history. In history. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And so after you graduated from UCLA, uh, what was your softball journey like after that? What did, did you just get drafted for the Athletes Unlimited League or did you want to go and play for Team USA? How did you end up at both? So I, I did. I was drafted in the Athletes Unlimited draft. Um, but I actually, so that was the year, the year I graduated in 21 was the year we went to the Olympics and I knew after post Olympics, I wanted to sit out and just kind of take, take a breath. Cause from college up until I graduated, I had no breaks. Like I was constantly on the go. And so just to be able, I knew that, that once I was, once I graduated and, and when I got back from the Olympics, I just wanted to take a breath. So I took the whole fall off and kind of just was wanting to, to live a normal life for once and kind of just enjoy being around family again and, and being a part of the family birthdays and the gatherings that, that my family had. Um, And then the, after the fall, that's when I realized I wanted to be put back on a, like an actual schedule. So that's when I decided I wanted to go um, be the volunteer at San Diego state where I was also still able to train and practice with the girls every once in a while and also go in and and lift and work out with them. So that's kind of where my career got started. Cause then I was kind of like, all right, I miss softball. I'm ready to get back into it. And then that's when I signed my athletes unlimited contract to go play 
and that was also the same year in 22 it was the the same year where uh AUX started so I got to play uh AUX in front of my my family because it was played out here in San Diego pretty cool and then how about Team USA um did you go to the Pan American Games last year as well as this year uh the Last Pan Ams I was a part of was back in 2019. So the okay. same year we won uh, the championship. And what was that experience like playing? Um, what what country were you in at that time? I know you were in Chile uh, just recently. Yes, the first one was in Peru. And I would say the way to describe the Pan American Games is like a mini Olympics. Like just the being being around all the, the all the athletes of every sport and just being able to be surrounded by just greatness. Like you'd be going down into the athletes' lounge and you're watching other um you're watching other uh sports just on the TV, which was really cool because um like you could be sitting next to a gymnast or you could be sitting next to a track track and field athlete and you're just making new friends um while you're at while you're there. So just the experience from both of them were the exact same feel, just being able to sit in the athletes lounge, make new friends um, and watch at their sporting events. So it was pretty cool. What were the softball fans like? Is it a, is it a popular sport there as well or a growing sport in South America? I would say it's, it's a growing sport. Um, actually in Chile, that, that was the very first Pan American games that they held with softball and baseball. Oh, that's awesome. And, mm -hmm. and it looked like, you know, we were able to tune into some of the games. Um, it, sometimes it was a little difficult to, to get the, you know, the updates on the scores and, and whatnot. But um, yeah. it looked like Canada had a pretty decent team. Um, and, you know, traditionally from the past, they have quite a few uh, professional athletes and college athletes. And, and then there are some countries that it seems like they're like just starting teams up. So there's kind of kind of a range, a broad range there. Um, is that yeah. is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I would say um, definitely the biggest competition, especially in the Pan American Games, would is Canada, Team Mexico, Team Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, internationally, that's those are tougher ones. Awesome. And then. Um, I'd like to talk to you a little more about your, your experience with Athletes Unlimited. And, you know, I, I really like um, how the sport's growing, how they're endorsing uh, more female athletes and empowering more women um, in sports and kind of changing the dynamics or the status quo that, that used to be out there. Um, athletes like Sierra Romero are out endorsing specific products that, you know, lend, uh, you know, support for women. And um, have you been involved with, uh, you know, sponsoring any products or how, how are all those types of things uh, happening for, for you in playing, you know, Athletes Unlimited and, you know, just having an impact on the sport and helping women in general? Yeah, so each athlete gets to pick like a charity or organization of their group. And for me, mine is the Women's Sports Foundation. Um, and I've been a part, I've been with the, a part of them for a long time now, actually. I think it was like my junior year of college is when I got connected with them. And same thing that they just represent all women in sports. They help them out. They give grants to girls and women in sport. Um, so that's, that's my charity of choice. Um, and I actually got to go to some of their, or some of their, um, events, which is really amazing. Like they just bring the youth together. We do little, like same thing like this. We do talks with them. We um, do we, activities with them. We get them um, active. I've also gone to some um, galas with them, getting all dressed up on a red carpet. So that's, that's who I play for, for Athletes Unlimited. Um, I've played for them for my second year in a row now. So uh, that's kind of how it works. You get to pick a charity of your choice. And then I actually think they also donated a certain amount of money that you've 
got a bonus from. I think that also goes to your charity of choice as well. So it was pretty cool to to play to play for them and to see some of the other women that were also representing their charities get to help expand their organizations out as well. Yeah, that's that's very cool. And that was the Women's Sports Foundation. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So, what's your uh, you know, what's the big picture for you now for the future? Continue to play in Athletes Unlimited. I know that you're getting involved with some uh, different different business opportunities. Um, what's in what's what's your future holding for you? What's your plan? Um, five years. I'm on a five-year plan right now. Just continue to stay involved in the sport. And um, right now, just working with the youth, um, getting ready. We're planning out some camps and clinics um, coming up probably within the new year uh, or coming up in this new year. And just just roaming, going all over the place right now. I've been nonstop since I've um, been done playing, at least since I got back. Yeah. No, it's, it sounds like you're extremely busy, <laughs> but yeah, take advantage of it now. Um, and it sounds like you got a, you got a plan going forward um, and definitely wish you the best of luck with that. So obviously you you got back involved or you got involved with coaching because you had an interest in the sport and you wanted to stay involved with it. Um, what would you say now as a coach on a team like you're working with other pitchers is you primarily a pitching coach with the teams that you've been involved with up till now or are you kind of involved with uh different aspects of the team yeah mostly with pitching um at least when I was at the colleges I was working a lot with pitching and then now I would do both um hitting and pitching and what would you say is the you know now that you're sitting on the coaching side of things and you're you're watching and interacting with them uh what do you what do you look for in a player? Do you look for somebody that's coachable? Um, in you know what what do you think uh, you make the players that you can make the biggest impact on, and uh, you know maybe just your perspective on on coaching in general. Yeah, I would say the ones that aren't afraid to ask the questions, um, being engaged with your coach, making eye contact. Um, reciprocating everything that they ask or are instructing. And if you don't understand it, make sure you speak up because that's the biggest thing is that I don't know if you're understanding it unless you tell me that you don't understand it. So like I'm trying my best to make you 1% better, 10% better that day. Like if I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying, it's hard to coach you if you're not going to reciprocate or tell me or talk to me about how I can make how I can also be a better coach to help you understand. So it's being, have, having that communication and that relationship with your coach being comfortable. Yeah. Um, definitely. Uh, it helps. Obviously communication is key. Um, and, and I think it's, I think it's interesting, you know, just from, you know, I'm, I'm going to be getting more involved with our high school, local high school team. Um, and, you know, I've been involved with travel from, about 12 U I'm all the way up to 23 U um, and it just seems like, you know, I'm always learning something new. It's always interesting. I love going to the NFCA, uh, you know, coaches clinics and mm-hmm. listening to both players and coaches and, you know, you hear different ideas and different ways of run, running drills or, you know, motivation um, and then trying to, you know, take that information and, tailor it towards the age group that you're working with and get the most out of them. I think that's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And mm-hmm. I love the competitive nature of it. And I'm sure you do too. You're a big competitor. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you're, you weren't only just a great pitcher. You know, I've, I've seen a lot of your hitting highlights as well. And I mean, it's, I wouldn't think that's a typical thing for pitchers. Is it in the college game and professional? I would say it's not. I mean, I grew up knowing that, I wasn't going to be a one-sided athlete. I knew that being a hitting pitcher was what I wanted and how I knew it was going to make me who I am as, as an athlete. And I mean, I grew up through the sport, people telling me, no, like, you're not going to be a hitting pitcher. You're just going to be a pitcher because pitching is your priority and all this. And I wasn't going to let that 
stop me from being me as an athlete. And the the amount of times I had to prove coaches wrong that I could do both was, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that, you know, in, in high school, I mean, it kind of depends on the coach you have, but uh, some of them have this old school mentality that I'm going to save my pitchers. Like I'm only going to use them and bring them out to the mound when I need them. And then I'm going to set them in the dugout. And there are some girls that can, you know, really hit the ball and, um, I think it kind of robs them of the opportunity to, you know, enter confidence for hitting and running the bases by the time they get to travel ball, you know, like out of their high school seasons. And um, I think, you know, you should let the girls play, you know, learn, learn as much as they can. Um, mm -hmm. How about as, how about as freshmen coming into college? What do you think is the, the key thing that's kind of missing uh, when they get there? Is it knowledge of the game? Do you think like base running or mm. um, when when coaches, you know, typically sit freshmen or rich red shirt them uh, coming in? I know it might be for you have somebody else that's really good in that position and, you know, you're not obviously not re as ready as them to make an impact. But what do yeah. you think are some of those things that uh, coaches make those decisions that they're looking for to have players, you know, develop more before they get to the college game? Yeah, I would say it starts off in practice. How how hard are you going in practice? Are you willing to to beat out your best friend at 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 that position because that's what it's going to come down to. I mean, yes, they're going to be your their your friends for life, but when you step onto that field, they're your competition because you want to get that starting position. So, don't be afraid to fight for that and when you get your opportunity, make the most of it because when when coaches see that you're the amount of effort that you're willing to put in at practice that's going to show up in the games yeah. translates if, if you're not doing it in practice it's not going to just happen in, at game time yeah um, exactly try try to convey that um I, I know we have quite a few few guests on i'm glad that um we had so many girls still able to join um and we can we can open it up for questions here for a little bit. Um, I know we're we're a little early, but that's good. Um, and and I'm sure that you know we'll like we have a pretty broad age group that'll be you know asking questions. So um, that's always fun. All right, guys. Um, do we have any questions from the group? What made you want to start softball? Uh, what? family, family and and friends. Just always growing up around the field I loved the atmosphere of the field whether it was softball or baseball I just knew I wanted to to put a glove on and and throw and we're gonna so after you ask a question then we're gonna let somebody else new ask a question unless there's no other questions so um we have a, another person that hasn't asked yet what advice would you give for a player that has to play up in an age group due to like their birthday? I would say, again, it's a sport of failure. Don't be afraid of failure because it's going to happen. I mean, I, even still to this day, I give up home runs. I miss pitches. I swing and miss at pitches, but it's how quick can you bounce back? How quick can you flush whatever just happened and get back on, get back up to the fence, get back on onto the field. Um, how quick can you, can you just recover? So just think about those things and, and don't, don't focus more so on outcome based, but like, if, like if you're hitting the ball hard and you're squaring it up, that's a positive, like eventually you're going to get, you're going to find a way on, but don't focus so much on outcome base. And, and I like the, you know, flushing it, you know, we, we say that a lot and then having a memory of a goldfish, three second memory, forget it, move on to the next thing. Don't let it, don't take it with you into the next play or, um, and so on. So it looks like somebody texted a question. What advice do you have for coaches like us working, uh, with youth disappeared? Can you read the question, Rachel? Yes. What advice do you have for coaches like us working with youth and potential future college players? Um, I would say I know that that mental health as of now is a, is a very sensitive topic. And because we're it's female athletes, I would always ask how they're doing first. Get 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 to 
get a relationship going that makes them trust you to not be afraid to hesitate to ask questions or anything that that they're like I'm not really feeling it today like you want to have that relationship where they feel comfortable enough to to come up to you and say those types of things because I know for me when I was going through the system I was always told just suck it up but I know like how how sensitive mental health is nowadays like we don't want the kids to be burned out like we want to continue to to see the success that comes from these these young athletes because they are the next generation so I would say just get to know your female athletes first and and like get on that personal level with them of like, like asking them how they're doing today or ask them how school's going or ask them how, how non-softball activities are going or whether sports that they're, they're also interested in. So I think that's a big one. And I think if you show that they have more value to you than just a player and so they know you care, that makes a huge difference, like with that relationship. So and I totally agree with you person before athlete always always remember that is there another question on the chat no okay all right is there another question from the group when what age did you start pitching i started when I was five or six years old and then I got into travel ball about nine ten years old another question do we have any other questions from the group I already asked a question but um have you ever got in like hurt where you've had to sit out like a bunch of games or practices? Yes. So I, my last game of my high school career, I tore my ACL and meniscus, which put me out for an, actually put me out for over a year. I was out for a total of 16 months before I was able to, to put cleats back on. Oh. Um, I would not change the process of how it happened or how the injury came about, I would say it's definitely um, physically and mentally made me a stronger person. And it's also, I would say it's helped me learn a lot more as an athlete and getting to know my peers a lot more um, asking, especially like when it come, came down to practices, like asking a teammate, how can I help them get better today? Whether it was feeding them, the machine or feeding the tea, letting them hit off the tea. So um, I would say definitely sitting out for that year wasn't the easiest. There was a lot of ups and downs with it, but um, I'd say it definitely made me stronger as a, as a person. How about, how about you uh, mentally when you went through that process, what kind of uh, mental attitude did you have? There was a lot of moments where I wanted to give up because going through any surgery that requires you to sit out for a year, um, it's, it, it's painful. I mean, it's, it's not something that I wish for anybody to go through. Um, I've had my fair shares of knee surgeries. I've had five on the same knee because of that one, that one incident, but I never let it stop me from getting back out there. I knew, um, listen to your body, especially like when you're going through these injuries, like if your body's telling you, you can't push a hundred percent today, how much can you give of your 50%? How much can you give of your, of your 30%? So like, like listen to your body in, in those ways. But I knew that, um, each day was always different for me with, with, with my injury. Some days I'm like, let's, let's do more. And other days I was like, I, I gotta do less, but I, I would say it was it was a year of just being able to learn who I was as a, as a person, how my body was feeling, um, but just being able to listen to to what your your body's telling you. And don't be afraid to tell your coaches if you have something that's wrong. Um, that's that's always something that I think you know. I would I wouldn't say that it's just a problem with female athletes but just be open with your coaches just because you tell them that you know something is hurt you know you shouldn't be concerned with having to sit out I would rather have you sit out one game 
or a tournament than to injure yourself worse and you'd be out for the, the entire season. Um, just try to keep that in perspective. Um, that's always something that we, we have talks about. Um, how about what is your biggest piece of advice for an incoming freshman playing in college? I would say the biggest piece going into college, I would say sit down with an academic mentor or some sort of person, get your schedule written out on paper or some sort of calendar. And I would say mark, mark the things that are, are a priority. And then also when you have those little gaps of free time, take advantage of your free time as well. Like do something fun or like do something that makes you happy because you don't want to be so overwhelmed with everything because I know how college can be like, I was always stressed, but I also knew the second I had free time, I was going to take full advantage of that and go do something that made me happy or made me feel like a better person. So whether that was going to get my nails done or going to go watch a movie, like I made sure to also write all that down into my, my calendar to make sure that I was prioritizing and, and time managing a lot more. Um, and softball wise go out there and just compete. I mean, you're you're a freshman and people are going to automatically just assume that because the returners are going to start, that's not always the case. If you're showing how much effort you're putting at practice and in those fall games, like you can easily go and take someone's spot. And then I have a, I have a question from another uh, player from my team that's going to play college uh, next year. And it's, uh, uh, she's going to be going to a community college with a goal of, you know, hopefully going to a, a bigger four-year institution from there, taking it as a, an opportunity, as a stepping stone. Um, what would you say, how would you work that out to continue playing? I mean, playing? So what kind of game plan would you go in with um, going into a community college in order to get to that four-year institution? I would say make sure that you're, the classes that you are taking are transferable into the schools that you want to transfer into. And I would also get in contact with those four years that you want to go to immediately because you don't want to wait last minute, especially as a um, two-year transferring into a four-year. So how quick can you get into the into communication with the schools that you're interested in and and I do believe that they still have camps and stuff for, for junior college athletes. I'm not hundred percent sure on that, but I'm just like, get, get in contact as soon as possible. Cause the, the quicker you're in, in communication, the more relationship you're going to develop with those coaches. And I would also ask your coach coming into the community college what their schedules like a lot of times they will play some bigger schools and it gives you an opportunity to be seen by those schools coaches um so if if there's a school on that schedule that you're interested in going to um you know reach out to that coach in advance and say hey we're going to be playing uh each other coming up and i'm interested in going to your school um that's always a big one and then in michigan unfortunately um there is not uh, a standardization for credits between colleges. So it's even more important, like what Rachel is saying, that you need to contact um, whatever four-year institution that you're interested in to make sure that what credits you're taking will transfer, that you won't have to retake classes and so on. And, and in Michigan, unfortunately, it's a college by college basis. So you really have to get involved with your uh, academic advisor as soon as possible. Uh, we have a question from our tenure coach. Um, who's been fantastic. Love having her on board. Um, uh, for coaches with younger players, what advice would you give us as coaches for a 10U team? For a 10U team, make it make it fun for them. That's the biggest thing because they're at that age where it's like they could be going through that burnout stage. And that's kind of where I was going into travel ball is I, I needed to take a step back before I needed to get serious. But like make, make the atmosphere as, as most enjoyable as possible for them, whether that's just, you know, making games while at practice and being creative and how you can turn softball into a competition that's, that's friendly, like playing a game of wiffle ball. That's the one thing, like when I put on camps, 
and I get the younger group, I make sure to play like a game of wiffle ball where there's no rules. They're just their backyard softball. It just make it fun. That's the biggest thing. Make them want to continue to keep playing. And I know she, she's been really big into, and, you know, just recommending and pushing to have like a big sisters uh, thing with our older girls and our older teams and having them get involved with our younger players. And I think that's a great, uh, a great way to help, you know, just inspire them and, you know, be a part of the big girls and, you know, you're doing all the same warm ups as the big girls are doing and, and having them in their practices. I think that's cool too. So I, I really like what they're doing. Um, any other questions from the group? Um, I have a question. What advice would you give for players who want to be a team leader, but still want to be a good teammate to other people? That's a hard one because a, you're you're trying to lead females and females are very strong headed sometimes. But um, I would say don't be afraid to call a teammate out like you can do it in a respectful way without being mean. Like you see someone slacking, like tell them to pick it up. That that's that's one way you can be a leader. You can you see the team struggling at practice. You tell the coaches, hold on, like we need to come together as a team and figure it out. Or even during games, like calling a timeouts when timeouts need to be called, but no one wants to call those timeouts. Like stepping up in ways like that is how you lead by is is how you be a leader. Um, again, don't be afraid to call that teammate out. I know it's not the easiest thing to do, and they'll get offended by it, but you're only making them better, and you're making yourself better. And always try to be positive and constructive too. I mean, you you want them to do well because you want the team to do well. So um, there, there's nothing wrong with that, like Rachel's saying, and and be vocal and talk to your coach, um, you know, if you have those concerns and come together as a group. So any other questions? I have a question. Yep. <laughs> um, first, Rachel. So, oh, okay. And, okay, we, we should introduce you because, so my 16U coach, his last name is Garcia. And he always says, my cousin's on TV playing, or my cousin's here, my cousin's going to come on to the virtual talk talk. So um, Coach Juan always brings you up, and this is his wife, Stephanie. So just to introduce I, you. <laughs> um, so first, I just have a statement. You're one of our family's faves. Um, our daughter couldn't be on tonight. She watched you grow in, or well, she watched you play while um she was you know going through high school and um she looked up to, does still look up to you a lot she couldn't be on tonight um she had uh infield practice with some of her upperclassmen and the rest of the infielders and um she has a big final tomorrow her first one for this semester so she couldn't be on tonight but she is looking forward to watching it um after on the recording so I wanted to tell you that. Thank you for taking this time to be on with all of us. Um, my question, I, I probably have a number of them, but what this is kind of fun. Did you have any routine? Um, I'm sure you you most softball players do, or anybody competing. What was your routine before you played on game day? My routine, I didn't really develop one until I got to college because my routine was always sleeping in the car rides to games and practices <laughs> when I was in travel ball. But uh, I would say my routines when I got in college, I, I always had to have a cup of coffee before, like right when I wake up, always had, a, had to, always had to have a cup of coffee. And then I would always, again, like I lived in the training room, so I made sure I was getting to the training room um, as early as I could get there. Cause I wanted, I knew that I was going to be in there the longest getting ready, warming up my knee, warming up a shoulder or something, doing some PT exercises before game. Um, and then I would actually be one of the first to show up to the field and I would kind of just sit to myself, um, out somewhere outside the stadium and just kind of stare at the field or just kind of sit there and enjoy the moment. Cause I'm, Cause I just like, I always liked peace and quiet before a game, just kind of to have, I wanted to hear my own thoughts, especially cause like my teammates would be blasting music in the, 
in the locker room. So that was just an environment that wasn't me meant for me, but um, some, some are different. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions from the group? What's your best advice to someone who gets in their head really easy and find it kind of hard to bounce back after a mistake? I would say focus on your breaths. I think being, if you can control your breaths and, and in the game, during it at bad pitching, whatever, like that's going to help you stay out of your own head. For me, I always had like a breathing routine when it came to like, especially for pitching. Cause I knew I was constantly moving. Um, so focusing on breath is a big one. And then I would say when it comes to failure, one of the biggest things that UCLA would always do with, with athletes when it came to striking out, dropping a pop-up or, or making an error on the field, like the second we got back into the dugout, we would go get a cup of water we would chug it and we'd crush it and then throw it into the trash can and then get back onto the fence or to the field so like that was kind of like our okay take your moment to just get your feet back under you and then throw away your mistake and get back out there because the game is constantly going and especially with how fast softball is so being able to just take your second to to gather your thoughts and what just happened and then being able to get your feet back under you and get back out there Well, that's a great question and a great answer. See, that happens at every level. <laughs> um, any other questions from the group? I had one more for you, uh, Rachel. I I just ask, um, you know, where you are today, uh, looking back on it. You know, if you were able to give your 17 or 18 year old self some advice what would it be or maybe even earlier than that to make an impact by the time you got to high school yeah I would probably tell my younger self enjoy the process it's not easy but um it's definitely going to be a memorable one and one that you'll always look back to and and tell yourself if I can get through that I can get through anything in life because trying to balance out softball and your personal life and your schooling is by far the hardest thing you can ask anybody to do, but not just softball, anybody in sport, but, um, you only get like this much of it. And it's what, what can you make the most of it? Cause you can't play softball forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, what do you think about our, our chalk talks, the, what, what we're doing with this site? We're really trying to, you know, this is not only just for our organization, but for the community, for anybody that's interested in the sport. We do a lot of free clinics as well throughout the year, just to invite kids in to participate in open practices or to work out and bring coaches in and players to work with them. Um, just trying to inspire kids to, to get involved and play. Um, what do you think about something like this, this type of format and um, using it for a tool to help reach out to kids? Yeah, I think it's awesome. I mean, I don't think enough people do this um, other than just people that wanted to get live in-person things. But I mean, Zoom's a great way to, to connect, especially with people that are in different areas. And again, um, you know, we'll, we'll let you go. We're at seven o'clock, but I, I really appreciate your time. It's so valuable and um, you know, you're a very impressive person, what you've been able to accomplish. And, you know, I know all of us wish you the best of luck and we're your biggest fan. So thank you. Well, have a, have a good night, Rachel. Thank you. You too. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.